In this video, we're going to talk about Ripple's Craig DeWitt. Turns out he joins the U.S. Faster Payment Council's cross-border working group. That was a mouthful. And we got some exciting news in the XRP world. It's all coming up right now. Chip here with the XRP Minute. What's up, everybody? Let's talk about what's been going on. How are you? How are you feeling? How is the how is the isolation treating you? Look at me. I'm getting pings on my phone. I better turn that off right away. Just wanted to say hello to everybody. Who, who popped in here first tonight? Well, it was none other than Billy Gould. What's up, Billy? We got Simon B in here. Connie's in here. And uh, Serdic is in Serdan Volkovic Volkanek. I gotta get the right pronunciation one of these days. Thank you for staying up. I know it's like 2 a.m. where you're at. And uh, guys, tweet this out. Let's get a bunch of other peeps in here. You know the notifications are all wonky on on uh, on uh, b -b 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 what is this? YouTube. Yeah, YouTube and wherever else we're broadcasting. We're also if you're if now if you're happen to be watching us on Twitter, welcome. Hello. You can also ask questions there. I won't respond because I don't have my twit, my chat for that up. But uh, but you can ask me questions, or you can just pop in here. Go find us on YouTube, and you want to go to to on the chain live, on the chain live. That's where you want to go. So yeah, it's uh, I know uh, I know sort of saying it's it's late, but it's only like eight. Uh, what is it? Eight thirty ish here. It's only like eight thirty here, so it's not all that late. But um, there's a lot of great things going on. I mean, as always, the move, move, the news moves quickly, and there's always something to talk about. And uh, well, tonight's no exception. We got lots of stuff going on. Shall we dive headfirst into the shallow end? I don't see why not. What's up, Jet Digital? OTC Live. Yeah, you bet, man. You bet. Good to see you. 3 a.m. Whoa, sorry about that. 3 a.m. Man, that is some commitment. Sardan or Shren, I don't. I gotta find out. You gotta tell me the pronunciation. Shoot me a video so I can pronounce your name correctly. Cause I always feel weird saying it. You know, I'm probably butchering it, and that happens. What are you gonna do? He, this guy never sleeps. He's up early. He's to bed late. It's incredible. So, let's uh, let's jump in. Let's let's hit the um, the main story here. I wanted to get it, jump into this, but um, Dilla Brow tweeted this out. Congrats, Crypto Cowboy. If you don't know, that's Craig Dewitt. He says, and R. Patrick Thielen, still remember you two driving all night to make that meeting with the Atlanta Fed. What? Wait, the Atlanta Fed? That's incredible. So we get a bunch of things in this tweet right here. So Dilip Rao, who's, who was with Ripple, yeah, I think he's lounging somewhere on a beach somewhere, taking it easy, but he's never too far away. He's always close by. He never strays too far away. And he's saying... Wait a minute. You guys drove all night to make the meeting with the Atlanta Fed. That's pretty incredible. So now we get a piece of information that at some point, Ripple representatives met with the Atlanta Fed. Now I wonder what that was all about. Well, then we get this tweet from uh, Craig DeWitt here. Craig says, uh, there he is, the crypto cowboy. He's missing a couple. Uh, can we buy a few vials? We could. He's, uh, he's in charge of product at Ripple. And uh, if you don't know, he's also put together that pay burner and X songs or songs. X songs is that one where you could sell your music. My music's up there. You can basically buy it for some XRP. I think it's pretty inexpensive. But yeah, my band uh, No Joy Yet is up there, which is just my personal project. You can always go listen to that. Or you can go to NoJoyYet.com, NoJoyYet.com, and you can listen to my music there. And I'll throw it in here if you guys want to go listen to it. NoJoyYet.com. There it is. Boom. I think yeah, it doesn't have, that's not actually a link, but that's how it is. You just copy it and paste it into a browser. And uh, so Craig DeWitt, yeah, so he put out this tweet, which is pretty cool. Very excited to join the U.S. Payments Council's cross-border working group. Say that four times fast. Apparently, I can't even say it one time, one time, not even fast. U.S. Pass, I can't even do it. U.S. Faster Payments Council's cross-border working group. You need like three breaths and a glass of water to do that. Look at that. Wow, that was really full of water. I didn't realize that was that full of water. And man, that, that's a wake-up call. What's up, BZ? Hey, what's up? How are you doing? Thanks for popping in here. Guys, tweet this out. Let's get some more peeps in here. 
So there's some heavy hitters on the on the team. There are some heavy hitters on the team. He ma- making sure Americans can pay anyone anywhere at any time. But it's not just Americans. I mean, the faster the faster payments council cross border working group. Yeah, that's for Americans. But it really reaches way way past that. But if it's happening over here, no, you gotta believe. You gotta believe. Can you believe? Please, can you somebody give me? Can, can somebody give me something? Does somebody believe? Do you have faith? Yeah, so you have to believe that it's happening in other places. So he says, making sure Americans can pay anyone, anywhere, anytime. And that's pretty badass. Now, we've known a bunch of people from Ripple on the uh, U.S. Pa- US Faster um, cr- um, Task Force. This is the U.S. Faster Payment Council's cross-border working group. Now, whoever came up with that, you know, hats off to them. That's a, that's a lot to say. And it's a good thing uh, you can you can now put more characters on Twitter, because it turns out the members at time, if you guys remember back in the old days, 140 characters. But then they went ahead and expanded. Yeah, what's up? Greetings, Mr. Alien Face. How are you doing today, man? And you're up late, too, young man. What are you doing up so late, young man? You should be in bed. I love when you guys when you guys bounce in from Europe, and uh, you know, and I'm crying at like nine o'clock, going, I need to go to sleep. I'm tired. I need to go to sleep. You know, it's really great of you guys to do that. Yeah. So. Uh, so Jeff says Ripple will be the epicenter of the battle against China's digital yuan trying to displace the USD. And, you know, there's a lot of stories coming out about that. I'm not buying any one of them. I just see it as a bunch of PR fluff. Yeah. Is the is the U.S. falling behind? The U.S. is falling behind. Right. Let's let's be honest about that. They are they're not exactly uh, they're not exactly on the cutting edge. They're not going like, hey, man, let's pass regulations. Let's get the SEC together. Let's go ahead and craft some, put some regulations through Congress because we're really interested in the U.S. being world leaders. No, that's not what they're doing at all. What they're doing is bickering, fighting, you know, poking each other in the eyes, like, you know, bam. You know, it's like the Three Stooges. And, um, yeah, they're not doing much of anything. They're not looking out for, you know, anybody. And and as, you know, the U.S. typically goes, you know, it kind of spreads out. So there's a lot going on there and riding on the shoulders. Because if you start seeing what I've talked about before, if you have a bunch of states that say, like, for example, California is looking to pass something to say that, you know, cryptocurrencies are not securities. Now, this is great for everybody. Why is it great? Because... It sets a precedent, and then when you have Wyoming, when you have other states jumping in, sorry if you live in New York, man. New York is like the New York's like a payment, like a, a payment scheme, right? It's like in New York, it's like, hey, you gotta pay up, huh? You got some money? I got some money. I'll get you some money. You gotta be part of the bit license. You got a bit license? I tell you what, you hire the guy from the bit license that found it, and he got the man. You guess over here, you see, capiche, huh? Capiche? And this is how you do it. It's all like you know under the table, and it's like. You know, in New York, now one of the things that I feel pretty sad about is now Uphold. The people in New York, they have Uphold, right? Uphold is fantastic because they've just partnered. Vitsavin, he just went ahead and, you know, he starts, he goes, hey, I have a, an idea for a hobby. Why don't I start the XRP tip on? And then it blows up, goes crazy. And then in the Netherlands, they go, they pass some regulations, they pass a new law, and they go, but don't worry, people, you have six months to figure it out. And so, you know, uh, Wheat Wind says, hey, man, I got I to gotta start I got to start rolling on this. So he reaches out to Uphold. Uphold says, hey, we'll take it on. And I got to tell you, you know, I transferred my XRP uh, tip bot over to Uphold. I already had an account, so it was pretty easy. Now, one tip that I will give you, if you want to know the difference between the XRP you hold and let's say the other XRP, which is your tip bot, I was looking at his uh, when I was when I was reading the documents for how to do it. First of all, it might be the easiest migration I've ever done, right? The, the hardest part was waiting. Like I, I guess it happened in a few hours, just because there's there's such a rush and they're 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 just being very careful, right? The the actual the actual XRP moved in three four seconds, but it's just matter matter of settling on the account. So one of the things when I was looking at the documentation, I saw that he had a card called the XRP card. It was called uh, um, the tip bot card. And I'm like, that's weird. I don't have a tip bot card. I don't, how come I don't have one? And when I moved my stuff over from the tip bot, it went directly into, um, my account for my XRP card. So it was on my XRP card. So I had everything on my XRP card. And, uh, and, and also I was seeing some streaming payments start to go through from coil that were hitting probably off my blog that were popping through. 
And if you didn't know, I have a blog. So I just put up a thing about San Francisco today. It's down below. You can read it. It's uh, today's Wordless Wednesday, and I made my contribution. I aggregated a bunch of photos. I had hundreds of photos, and I just picked some of my favorites out and threw it into Wordless Wednesday, uh, my coil blog over there. But to get back to this, one of the things I realized was, oh, wait, wait a minute. You can do anything you want here. You can make your own card. You don't need – you don't necessarily need to uh, – to, uh, I was wondering, like, the, is there a special card? No, no. What you do is you go in there, call it anything you want, tips, tip bot, whatever, and then you can create your card. And then what I did was I went to Coil and I set up a payment pointer, and then I pointed it directly to my uphold. So it's kind of cool that, um, and I'm gonna have to also do that for, I think I'm gonna also have to do that for my tip bot too, because that's streaming into my other my other card right there, right? So with that being said, it was a, it's a pretty good migration. If you guys are just going to continue to use the XRP tip bot, you have to do the migration. If you don't have an Uphold account, go get one. Now, if you live in New York, this is how this whole conversation originally stemmed. Man, like I told you, New York, it's like if you're in New York, you can't use Uphold. So guess what? You now don't have a tip bot anymore. And I know a bunch of there saw a bunch of tweets. I don't want to really pull them up. But what do you expect uh, Mr. Wynn to do? I mean, let's face it. I mean, he's doing the best thing he can to save the tip bot. And, you know, he can't account for no regulations and, and how locked down New York City is. And, you know, if you look at New York now, listen, I can talk bad about New York. I grew up in New York. OK, I can talk all day long about New York. I don't live there. I don't want to live there. I love passing through. That's always a fun thing. But no, I don't want to live there. And uh, they got a lot of problems up there, mostly with the uh, the management. When I say the management, I'm talking about the governor all the way down. It's a mess. People have been migrating out of New York for years. How do I know this? Because at one time, Florida was like 15, 16 million people, and, and New York was 22, 23 million. Now you have 20, I think 21 or 22 million people living in Florida and only 20. So now Florida has a larger population than New York. What do I think about that? I don't like that either because the New Yorkers are coming down here and they bring their New York attitudes and I don't like them. I say pack up your stuff and get out of here, buddy, okay? Either you come down and enjoy the sunshine. I don't want to hear you. you don't know how to make pizza. You don't know how to you don't have bagels. I don't want to hear that, man. Listen, we have sunshine, we have beautiful weather, and we have beautiful people. And if you don't want to join the beautiful people, then get out. That's what I say. So anyway, enough about that little rant. Let's jump in. There is some more news to go over. I wanted to jump into the news. Oh, thank you, uh, sir. I appreciate that, the San Francisco Post. Thank you, man. I Man, there were so many more photos, but it would have been so long. I, I couldn't have just dragged down about that. So thank you, man. I appreciate that. And by the way, if you guys want to know, um, Sir Dan Volkanik um, right there, who put posted right there inside there, it was his blog that inspired me. I said, crap, he's telling a story with photos. I'm not going to tell a story. I'm just going to pick ones. But his his whole thing was a story, and I, that's what inspired me to actually put my post up. So I want to thank you for that, man. So this is how we inspire each, inspire each other inside the community. Community. What is going on over here? Wait a minute. What's going on? Something's happening here. Let's see. Ba -ba -boo. There we go. Okay. So what else is going on in the space? Well, we'll jump in. Let's go to some other news here. So here's something else. So Shapeshift, you guys remember Shapeshift platform and keep key wallet now support XRP. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna go down and check out this uh, this tweet that they sent out. But they're a crypto platform. It's funny because I I haven't heard anything about Shapeshift in the longest time. But you know you can you can buy, sell, trade, track, send, receive, interact with the digital assets. It's a web and API platform. It, was back, it, was, it started back in 2014. Um, it also was to provide instant Bitcoin and altcoin conversion with the maximum level. And they were like one of the first ones out there, thus the name Shapeshift. You know, you could take something, you know, instantly Bitcoin and boom, they were turning into Ether. So that was one of the things. That, and before Changely and some of these other platforms came out, but that was it. But two days ago, they went ahead and they announced the addition of XRP to the platform. And I love this, guys. Let's go over this. This is funny. So XRP, look at that, you know, um, they put the little dollars on uh, XRP is now available on Shapeshift. You know, they got the little the little emoji, the little party emoji. What's up? Yay. And they go, look at this, send, receive, and trade Ripple commission free. What? Wah, wah. Rip, trade Ripple. Well, I would love to trade Ripple. I think we all would love to trade Ripple. Ripple is not a public company, people. Oh, did you think, did they assume that Ripple and, yeah, okay. Now, I understand. I mean, at one point it was called Ripple, the XRP. Then they distinguished that it was XRP. 
but nobody seems to be able to get that straight. All the articles, everywhere else you could possibly read about it, it's the ripple, right? So they say send, receive, and trade ripple. What they really meant to say was send, receive, and trade XRP commission free. But they thought they would tag ripple somehow in there, and they try to work them in there. Get started now, and here's a little link there. Ripple is now available. <laughs> Man, when would these people learn? Do you think they'll ever learn? Will they learn? I don't think so. When will they learn? See right there? Ripple is now available. What is Ripple available? I don't know. These people are silly. What's up, Omar? How are you? What about the BRD coin? Yeah, what about the BRD coin? Yeah, that's a good one. BRD, by the way, we are attempting to get someone from BRD on the chain. If you guys have any connections out there, I know we've reached out, so if you guys want to, you know, help us out, we'd love to get an interview over there, so we want to talk about that. That's exactly right, man. So if you anyone knows something, hey, you know, pass it along. And uh, here we go. So here's some other exciting news. So uh, Stuart um, Adorati, now he's the general counsel for Ripple, he tweeted that the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau believes that Ripple's products could allow banks and credit unions to know the exact final amount that recipients of remittances will receive before they're sent. So do we. Now, this has been news we've been hearing about for the last couple of days. A lot of it has been mismanaged news in the sense that people got it wrong. Um, you know, the, the CFPB uh, approves Ripple. No, they just made a statement saying that companies like Ripple, they also mentioned Swift in there, it wasn't that they were like singling out, but all of a sudden you were seeing like breaking news. The CFPB is full, full bore on, on Ripple or XRP, and it was all kinds of misconstrued stuff. That's why you really have to read these articles carefully because they just take something, they start running with it, they 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 write it. And weird thing is they never really print the uh, they never print retractions or say, oops, I mean they messed up. So she's Burla comes in and says. He comes here and says he's now he's the SVP of product um, at Ripple. Obviously, you know him pretty well. Um, board member at Bitso, board observer at MoneyGram. I'm a board watcher. I watch the boards. Hello. I watch them. I'm not official or anything. I just call myself a board watcher. Um, and he's also a Wharton uh, alum. And if you know Wharton, that's one of the things. When I asked my daughter, I'm like, where do you want to go to school? And she's like, Wharton business. And I was like, whoa. So that was cool. And that was like when she was like 14 or 15. So I was like, let's see if she she wants to go there for business. So and if, if you guys know somebody else famous, uh, famous out there that went to Wharton Business School as well. Anybody know it? It's a little trivia question. If you have it, throw it in the chat. I know there's somebody pretty famous who's in the news pretty much daily. Also a graduate from uh, Wharton School of Business. And also, 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 so are the children's uh, children. So if you know it, throw it in that chat, man. I want to see if I'm going to see who's on top of this. If you don't, I'll circle back. Just remind me. But uh, Ashish Burla says, "Hey, glad we all agree that correspondent banking is outdated in every sense. Opaque, expensive, and slow. What are we speaking about right there? Well, we're talking about Swift. Opaque. What does opaque mean? It means you can't see through it. What does that mean? It's non-transparent. Yeah, that's right, Connie. Boom, you get the gold star of the evening." That's Prez, yeah, 45 gets it. Yeah, Donald Trump is a, is a graduate of Wharton Business. So is, I think, Don Jr. And I believe um, I believe Eric is as well. So that's pretty interesting. Uh, there's actually a lot of a lot of people went to Wharton Business School. Very good school. Um, I was there at Penn State. I was there. Um, actually, you know, the funny thing is the one time I was at Penn State, it's going to really date me, guys, but I was there for Live. I was there the day that Live Aid happened back in the 80s. But anyway, um, I was there and... Um, yeah, I was watching in a little pizza parlor. I was watching. I was actually watching Queens. I don't want to. I don't. I didn't want to miss Queens. So I was watching them, and uh, yeah, a little bit of look at that. Some trivia there. There we go. Dan, Dan, the XRP man. Connie for the win. Yeah, boom. Right. So he's um, he's putting a little dig. I like Burl because he doesn't he doesn't min mince words. He goes all in. He's like the correspondent banking is outdated in every way. Opaque, expensive, and slow. Now, if you take that slow and you stretch it out another two days, three days, four days, you're getting close to sweat. Not quite there yet, but you're getting close. Consumers deserve transparency. I know somebody that's transparent. Great to see the CFPB recognizing RippleNet's capabilities and the use of XRP for cross-border payment settlement in this regard. And as you guys know, RippleNet... 
um, is really the messaging part of it that allows that, but it's really the settlement part. And this is what I think most people miss about XRP. One of the reasons we do the XRP minute, which turns into an hour. But um, on the other channel, if you go down below, if you're new here, uh, I do put out shorter little segments. I put out a shorter one this morning. But um, I do the shorter um, segments, so they're there. But anyway, what he's talking about, I think most people miss. And I'm not talking about you. Not you. You already know. But I'm talking about the people outside the community, you know? Like the tone vase of the world. It says, oh, man, it's just a... It's a security. It's a security. Well, if that's a security, then so is Ether and so is everything else, right? But no, not the almighty Bitcoin. No, 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 no. With an awesome use case. And guys, what's that awesome use case? It's a store of value. That's it. It's a store of value. Hey, who knew? That's what it does. What does it do? And every four years, the hype goes mad and people go crazy and they have, they have the having parties and... Uh, Jeff and I did a stream last week. We called it the bit, uh, the bit flop. So I always, you know, you know it's going to go up. And again, I'm not a hater on, on, on Bitcoin, but sometimes the community members can be a little bit extreme, a little bit nutty, a little bit crazy, right? Without a doubt. Let's look else what else we have here. So Stephen Bull from the DF, he said, when asked how XRP would help banks to stay solvent by moving trapped liquidity and Nostra Vostra accounts back home, Here's how Faisal Khan responded to my question. If you want to know who Faisal Khan is, he's an exporter payment specialist, um, access to banking processing, license specialist, crypto friendly, blah, blah, blah. So that's him. Of course, he has his own website. So he replied to Stephen Dieppe uh, from the, or Stephen Bull from the Dieppe. He basically said, um, you know, thank you for the great video. Um, one question for myself, hope you'll do a video about this. Do you think in a financial crisis happening right now in which liquidity is drying up, would banks have that capital sitting in pre-funded Nostra Vostra accounts around the world? Would they embark on adopting digital digital assets like XRP to move liquidity on demand back from the um, stay sol to stay solvent? And Faisal Khan replied, that's a very unique point you have there. The thing mo many people don't know is that the money parked in Nostra accounts does not get taken into account as per the Basel III rules. They might move some of the capital back, but it's not enough to stay solvent, in my humble opinion. That's what IMHO stands for. It took me a long time to figure that out. I had to finally Google it. But in my humble opinion, usually you see in my opinion, but in my humble. Because if you're going to have an opinion, you better be humble about it. You know, I mean, you know, if you're going to have one. He says, um, I don't think XRP will be playing a role here for on-demand liquidity immediately. It will eventually, but not at present. They, the banks, have other problems they need to look and solve in, the, in these downtimes. And he's kind of right about that, but it's really an interesting take on that. I really like the fact that uh, um, that he goes in and he says that he's basically saying all belief, and he's, he's really catching in on the, uh, the the point made. But the money that is parked in those Nostra accounts does not is not taken into effect, right? And that's interesting that they sort of overlooked that. And XRP, what he's basically saying is liquidity, um, it will happen in time. But right now, banks are scrambling for other reasons. they got a lot of stuff going on right now. If you haven't noticed, there's sort of a, I don't know, there's sort of a thing going on. Let's say that. We don't want to say what it is. We all know what it is. BZ Comedy Channel says, uh, hey, the definition of an oxymoron equals swift payment system. Boom. Oh, well, that's a good one, BZ. Nice. Solid. Solid. Solid as a rock. Yeah, so there we go. So that's a pretty interesting question. I love this tweet. Stephen Bull from the DFs always putting some cool stuff out there. He's always finding great, great stuff. Here's another one we we saw out there. Ripple's partner SBI Holdings leads at 200 million. Um, is that euro? I guess it's euro. I don't know. I don't even recognize it. I guess it's euro. It looks weird. Um, 200 million investment in German venture capital firm. Yeah, it must be euro. So the CEO of SBI Holdings, we know him very well as Yo Yoshitaka Katao. He's a founding member of Ripple's board of directors. He announced that SBI Holdings is leading an investment round where the German venture capital firm Redstone Digital is looking to raise $200 million. When raised, it'll be investing in growing startups that are specializing in Industry 4.0. So this is kind of interesting on its face as well when you think about this because SBI, they're spreading some love around there, right? So it'll be interesting to see what kind of stuff that Redstone and basically 
you know, bets on. But this is SBI, as you know, with venture capital. You know, VC companies will they they will take they will gamble on a lot of things. They they expect anywhere from eight to twelve percent of the companies to make it, right? They know that there's an eighty percent plus failure rate, but they're gonna bet on a bunch of different things and they have the reasons. But let's face it, most VC companies you're lucky to get ten percent uh, success, twenty percent. Most of the time it's gonna fail, and it's not really because of the teams or anything. Look, there's a lot of competition in the space, and something that seemed like a good idea may not happen. So this venture capital said that the initiative was basically designed to invest about 10 million euros in each of the um, startups in their later growth phases. So they're already betting on startups that have already sort of proven themselves. They're not like they're not seed rounds or initial rounds. These are like startups that have been around a little bit, and uh, really going to be like around the Internet of Things, smart factory, industrial robotics, machine learning cloud computing and other. So it's a pretty cool thing that you see SBI is branching out. Um, Katal said SBI Holdings joined the joint venture due to Europe's technological and innovative expertise in developing sustainable solutions for the industry. According to SBI, Redstone Digital hasn't invested over 300 startups since being established back in 2014. That's a pretty solid amount of investments, 300 uh, since 2014. So here we go. As far back as 2016, they give a little bit of uh, a little bit behind the scenes here with SBI and Ripple. Since then, Ripple, blah 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 blah, and that's it. That's really the kind of way they're tying this in. But it's interesting that SBI is on the move. They're doing big things. Um, Katao is a really amazing leader. You know, in 20 years, he basically put um, SBI he put a lot of things on the map. You think 20 years ago, you know, 20 years ago, Google was already get, getting their, their footing, right? They'd already rolled out after a couple of years. Yahoo was the biggest thing ever, and Yahoo did, hasn't really worked out all that well, but it happens, you know? And back then, you could have bought Amazon stock for a prayer, basically, right? And it's funny when we all owned it back then, or some of us did. I'm not going to point to anybody, but some of us did. I'm not going to say any names, but some of us did. But, you know, you don't know. You live and you learn. What's up, Alex Yeet? What's up, Alex Yeet? Alex G with this solid, you know, artwork out there. He's such a talented artist. You guys need a banner or anything, man. You want to see Yee because the, the, he's got some serious uh, skills over there. What else do we have? Let's roll right along here. So this is the U.S. Faster Payments Council. Um, this is the council. This isn't the actual one that he joined. But again, this whole thing is set up to basically talk over area right there. Boom. Let's get let's zoom right in on that. Cross border payments. See, so there you go. QR code interfaces and all that kind of stuff. So any who's any who's uh, there you go. And then, of course, Visa and blah, blah, blah. Now, Visa is making some major moves. Now, Visa uh, is acquiring Plaid. Plaid just came out something. It's really not doesn't really touch this space a lot. But in the tech space, Plaid is really like one of the big interfaces. If you ever went to go use, um, I think Uphold uses Plaid, but a lot of big companies that you put your 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 credentials in for your bank and then you log directly in your bank and it creates that seamless integration. They just released a new API today and Visa's in the middle of acquiring Plaid and they're massive, right? So they're getting into all these other FinTech and you think about it, you know, a company like Visa that's, you know, it got its hands in everything, they're really looking pretty deep and they're really going hardcore on the FinTech and they could really emerge as a giant company. But look at some of the, uh, look where they've got testimonials from here, from Bankcard, Visa, MasterCard, Chase, right? They're all in there. What's up, Richter? How are you, man? And then uh, here, let's get into our privacy segment. We like to do a little privacy segment. Let's do the uh, let's do the privacy segment. And now, coming up, we've got the privacy segment. This is the segment where we look at more and more of our freedoms being eroded. Shall we get into it? Why not? Let's jump in. So here we go. So Apple and Google. Now, I love this. This is my favorite little tech bloggers over at TechCrunch. Just love the little kids over there, man. They're so, and I say little kids because they're a lot younger than I am, man. They're like, they weren't even born, you know, for, they're just born like the last 15 years or 20 years, whatever. So Apple and Google launch Exposure Notification API. And you're probably asking yourself, well, hey, Chip, what does that mean? Exposure API enabling public health authorities to release apps. See, what does that mean exactly? Well, let's get into it. So they made available the first public version of their Exposure Notification API. It originally debuted as the joint contact tracing software tool but i'm guessing that they didn't like the joint contact tracing software tool because it sounded like they were tracing you that's what it sounded like like they were following you like they were tracking you let's come up with ubiquitous name 
the Exposure Notification API tool. Okay, see where this is going? So Google, and it's always, and they say like, oh, Google and Apple, they're working together. My gosh, they're best friends. Isn't that great? They later renamed it the Exposure Notification System to more accurately reflect its functionality, which is designed to notify individuals of potential exposure. Let me reword that. Let's go ahead and dissect that sentence. The partners re later renamed it because it looked like a huge invasion of privacy. Didn't sound so good. So now it's now they, so now it's designed to notify individuals, tracking, knowing where you are at all times, and saying, "Hey, buddy, weren't you uh, weren't you over somewhere the other day? And couldn't you be exposure?" I don't like any of this stuff. I'm going to be real honest with you. I don't like any of this stuff. You know, look, you guys know I'm a big Apple fan, you know, and Google's, you know, they, they have their own uh, strong points as well. But if look, I mean, the majority of it, you might have you might have a different, you know, make of phone, but you're probably use, going to be using iOS or Android, right? Now they're on the phones and now they're tracking people. I'm sorry that I call it tracking. I meant to say exposure notification. To be clear, now this is this is funny because this is probably in the presser. The press release that came out. To be clear, the launch means that developers are working on behalf of public health agencies. They can now issue apps that make use of it. Apple and Google themselves are not creating an exposure notification or contract tracing tool. Did you see that? Did you just hear that? They are not. They're not doing it. No, no, no. No, it's not Apple and Google. No, no, no. Can we be very clear here? Not Apple or Google. I love that, right? They're not doing it. No, no, they're not. They're not responsible for the exposure notification or contact tracing. No, companies say that many U.S. states, 22 countries across five continents, have already asked for and been provided access to the API to support their development efforts to track you and trace you and erode more of your freedoms. Okay, that part's not in there. I made that part up, but it's really what it is. The exposure notification API works using a decentralized identifier system. You see that? Oh, it's decentralized, really? Um, that uses random generated temporary keys created on a user's device. Oh, it's on my device, but it, you're telling me, so this is how you get around this stuff. You say that they're, they're randomly generated, some random generated key that sits on your, th your device. Hmm, I don't know about that. So basically, uh, yeah, this is what, what they're doing. Apple and Google have made various improvements to ensure privacy is the utmost consideration, including encrypting all Bluetooth metadata, like signal strength, and specific transmitting power. So I don't know. I mean, look, I mean, I like to think that it is safe, but I'm going to... So what do you guys think? Do you guys think it's safe? Let me know here. Let me know down below. Do you guys think... The, are you guys buying this? Are you buying it? Am I over... Am I going overboard here? Am I really overreacting, or is this really... Is this... Would we, if you had released this two years ago and said, hey, if somebody gets the flu, don't worry. Oh, no, don't worry at all. Listen, we have got a new app. And it's going to tell you if you've had exposure to anybody to the flu, you'd be like, what? You would really be like, are you kidding me? I mean, what? But um, but no, but since, uh, you know, you can't let any good, you know, um, catastrophe go unnoticed. So this is what you do here. Yeah. So what do you do? You say like, well, no, this is a part that I love. One of the most effective techniques that public health officials have used during outbreaks is called contact tracing. But not on this app. It's not called that. Just remember that. Through the approach, the public health officials contact, test, and treat and advise people. Blah, 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 blah. You know what this says? Uh, they throw in privacy-preserving digital technology. No. Okay. So this is a whole lot of whatever, you know. There you go. That's what it is. Company previously announced plans to make their exposure notification system a feature in a later update. Well, I saw that an update came out. Uh, beta was released today for iOS, and they said, well, due to the COVID-19, uh, there's some more, uh, there's some more, um, you know, features. And I'm like, man, can can you make my phone do other cool things, like my alarm really work? Yeah, Zhao says it's not like they're not already listening to everything and tracking every move. That's, that's a solid point right there. Uh, BZ says that he thinks the progression of tech was always going to infringe on privacy, right? Navigation, payments, etc. They all need this uh, this info to function. Yeah, well, I guess to a certain degree, but I think what they're trying to say here. See, what I worry about is like you know, if you're the wizard behind the curtain and you go like, don't worry, 
no, don't worry, it's all private. You're like, well, can I see? Well, no, no, don't just trust us, trust us. So part of the issue is here, like, if it's David Chom from Elixir, I go, yeah, man, I trust you. You've been, you've got a study track record. You know, you first, you wrote the first uh, basis for digital uh, payments back in the 80s. Yeah, man, you've earned a lot of trust. You're, you're good with me. But you're like one of the big Googles or the Apples or whatever. Do I trust you? Not as far as I can throw you, really. Doesn't mean I'm not a fan, but I'm just saying I don't really, I'm not new. No, I don't think so. So here we go. Boy, look at this. We have another feature here. Isn't this interesting? Twitter is testing a feature that limits who can reply to your tweets. So again, I ask you, what is the point? What's the point? So now you're going to put out a tweet and you're going to say, you know what? I don't want to be triggered by your dissension. I don't want to know that you believe differently than me and you have a different opinion. And therefore, I will cease to look at and I will cut off any of your reactions. So this is what this is all about, right? Here we go. So uh, Twitter put out this tweet, testing, testing, a new way to have a convo that's cool for conversation with exactly who you want. You know how you do that? It's called a direct message. Yeah, you direct message one person and you can have all the convos you want all day. So you, so they're starting with a small percentage globally. So keep your eyes out to see it in action, right? This is what they're saying. So Twitter acknowledged that it's begun testing on this new setting that lets users limit who can reply to tweets. The setting was first noticed early this year. Similar to Facebook's post view settings, the current implementation features a small glove icon in the corner. Tapping it brings up a who can reply window. Do you see what this is all about? This is all about weird that it's an election year, huh? How strange is that? An election year, they don't want anybody's other opinion. You see where all these narratives are? Well, listen, I think, does it fit the narrative? No. Okay, we will squash you. We will crush your head like a grape. Oh, okay, so you don't care about my opinion? No, no, not free speech. So users can pick one of three options. Everyone, people you follow, and only people you mention. What this basically does is it just silences people. So someone puts out a tweet and says, hey man, I'm the coolest politician that ever lived. And you're like, you're a total jerk. You know, kiss off. And, uh, but no, 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 no. They don't follow you. So they see pe only people we follow. So they want the echo chamber. They want to just talk to themselves. We already have DMs for this. Again, Twitter being Twitter, making stuff useless. Yeah, Tone Vase will love that, BZ. BZ says Tone Vase will love that. He sure will. So um, the thread itself will all acknowledge that all replies are limited. So so look at this. So Susie says, hello, foodies. Uh, today we're talking with two of the best chefs I know, Thomas and Cheryl. Oh, wait a minute. Why can't I reply? Oh, because Sweet Susie, at Sweet Susie, chose to only let people they mentioned in the original tweet. This is the dumbest thing ever, and it's going to crash Twitter. This is everybody's going to be in an echo chamber. So all the people that think like you and look like you and talk like you are going to get to be just like you. And they're going to get to say, hooray, Susie, you're fantastic. And you really are the greatest person on the earth. This is the dumbest thing ever. Director of product management. Blah, 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 blah. So there you go. There you go. That's what I have to say about that, right? It's a silly thing. This one, I have to say, this is my favorite headline that I have seen in a very long time. GoPro releases a flashlight for some reason. This is the greatest headline ever. You know GoPro, I mean GoPro. Do so I have one here? Where's my GoPro? Sitting right here, see? This is a GoPro camera. Bam, GoPro. There you go. It's a GoPro. You know, you can take it up and down things, throw it and stuff underwater. I got, I brought it underwater uh, when I was doing some, some diving. It's just, it's a great little camera, and now it's an old model. I need a newer model. But anyway, um, today GoPro ent uh, entered the cutthroat business of person. I had a, I had a look at myself like, is this TechCrunch? Is this TechCrunch? I thought, man, might have been like, you know, the Onion or something like that. Enter the cutthroat business of personal lighting. This is the GoPro Zeus Mini. It looks like a little. Looks a rad little light, although it's a curious product from the, um, this action camera company. Waterproof mini costs $70 USD. Has a magnetic spring clip. GoPro says the light's compatible with all GoPro mounts. It's just a funny article. This has nothing to do with anything, but I just loved it. It's just fantastic. 
Anyway, it's funny. It's best headline ever for some reason. Can you imagine? Tesla releases a new new um, a new truck for some reason. Now, this is great. Um, XR Ripple releases a new loan program for some reason, right? This is fantastic. I just love that, man. And we want to talk about what's up, Sean Thompson? What's up, good people? And bad people and people of the crypto space. So I love stuff like this. Every once in a while I see something like this, it gives me a good laugh. 70 bucks, man. It's not just like a little flashlight. It's pretty solid. It does have a pretty bright light. But imagine you clip it on and you're doing some GoPro stuff. It's really great. There really is no light that you could use with a GoPro, especially in compromised lighting. And I wanted to go to this right here. This is the Rimac um, Scantlin. Um, it's a concept car with a 3d printed chassis that breathes oxygen what breathes oxygen like a jelly bit <laughs> yeah that's what it does so um let me put this uh play a little bit of this video here for you we're not going to play any sound we're just going to put a little video on let's do a full screen here but check this out look at this bad boy man it's a sick looking thing everyone is win lambo right right freaking clutch so everybody's like, when Lambo, when Lambo. Or I'm like, dude, when Scantalant, Galantalant. I don't even know what the name of this car is, but look at this. It looks like it's some kind of one of these breathing machines. I mean, obviously, this is all 3D generated, but still, it's a sick looking car. It's almost as cool as the Batmobile. But when I look at like when Moon, I'm like, this is some seriously cool tech right here, man. And we'll get in some pictures right there. It's called the Rimac Scantal Scal Skeleton. My gosh, is what the heck? I can't even I can't even pronounce that. Can we say that together? Skeleton. It's like skeleton, but it's skeleton. The Rimac. It's stunning. So let's check out some of these images right here. So one of the things is this this bad boy has. Um, it's got some renewable energy, but apparently it breathes oxygen in some way. But check this out. It's it's probably one of these concept cars that will never get made. Let me make that just a little bit larger. But look at this thing, man. It's cool looking, right? It's like what you might picture the next batmobile movie to have maybe some bigger all-terrain wheels but it's pretty bad ass as i like to say look at this thing just amazing i'm not so sure about that big scoop in the back i think that could get a little bit uh you hit a couple hills there and that thing maybe you could do some drag racing i don't know it's kind of weird freaking clutch says i'm shocked that a lot of the big tech sites crypto news sites and exchanges aren't going web monetized via coil i tried reaching out to many over the last year they they will be late in, instead yeah, and that was something that I freaking clutch. I had brought that up too in one of my uh, my video today about Coil. And I was talking about the fact that 35% of the web is powered by Coil. And if you think about 35%, oh, I'm sorry, 35% of the web is powered by WordPress, WordPress site. So that's like, if you look at a WordPress site, 35%, that's one third of the web is sitting on a WordPress generated site um, um, on the CMS side pretty huge so you look at you look at the the possibility for coil on that you know people like TechCrunch. we're looking at an art this is yanko design but TechCrunch right here this is a TechCrunch site this is a wordpress right so TechCrunch has something called uh it has something called extra crunch right here right and you can basically join them so look at this dollar your first month 100 bucks a year now this is a perfect perfect use case suppose you take the new coil WordPress plugin, you pop it in here because this is WordPress. Suppose you're reading something. Now you can show some of the, sometimes I get sucked into these articles and they're extra crunch articles. They usually do like a lot of, um, a lot of like deep diving on stuff. So let's show you a little bit. Now what's interesting about this WordPress plugin and it will allow you to um, show some of the content and then you could like put the line. If you guys are familiar with the coil blogs, um, um, I'll show you what that looks like. Let me see if I can pull this up real quick here. Let's go to, let's see, Coil Blogs. Let's just pull up a blog here. Yeah, let's pull up Bowie's uh, wins here. So I don't think he has. No, nope, he doesn't have it. Of course not. Um, let's see. Let me see. Let me see. Holy cow. Man, try to pull up something good. Let's try to pull up sort of certain but I don't see any of them here. Any who's a bob. Anyway, so let me see. I'm, what I'm trying to do is find something that has that extra little part below. Okay, that's a link. That's the other thing I don't like. I don't like when they put links in there. Totally gets me. This is one of Patricia C's um, posts here. 
and she did a cool video but again that doesn't also doesn't have the extra i'm trying to find one where is it wordless wednesday voyage here we go here's Serdan's post i was looking for this this is what inspired my post about san francisco then i was talking about the story right train station let's put this a little bit bigger here so you're going through here on a wordless wednesday very cool pictures really gets you a sense of what it feels like you get some movement there people walking right it's cool man look at the graffiti on that bad boy love it love it movement people trains and again that also does not have it man i am striking out left and right here let's go see what else but hey we're checking out cool community stuff let's see uh we got riley um riley q has one cinnamon's first challenge and a new song she put out called broke let's see if she has something and she yeah, right here. I see where your subscriber perks start right here. Now, what normally you could just put that little line there and say if you're not if you're not like logged in, you could say, "Hey, and this is the perfect opportunity on WordPress." Now, imagine it looking like this. On WordPress, people just have a blog, they have some content. Now, this is where I talk about um, with a TechCrunch where okay, suppose you you just want to read the one article. You could read the article and be streaming um, it, it says, "Hey, you could sign up for join extra crunch or you could get a a coil subscription for five or ten dollars so what can you do with that well you can watch if you're watching one of our youtube videos right now you are streaming payments okay on on the chain either one of the channels and if you're if you're on coil you're streaming payments if you're on imgur you're streaming payments so the, the use case keeps growing and growing if you're on a, if you're on a wordpress blog and they have it's coil enabled and they've got something locked down either all the way or a little bit boom you can now that's that's it's a it's a phenomenal sort of a i'm not gonna show that because you guys gotta that's that's privatized comment content right there but but again your subscriber perks start there and when that when it, when you're not logged in it will say hey just go out and get yourself a login now i want to talk about the importance of this yeah so freaking clutch says imgur twitch wordpress coil youtube cinnamon chrome plugin etc right on thank you I've, i'd forgotten about cinnamon any site that has traffic at this point without an ILP pointer is point blank redundant. I have to agree with that. And if you guys go, I will tell you something else. Here's another here's another site since it launched. Welcome to On the Chain. OnTheChain.io. Since day one of launch, this has been a coil enabled site. So that's what you're talking about, freaking clutch. Is you can also be on one of these sites too and be coil enabled. So a, we a regular website. Now one of the things that I like. And we'll probably experiment a little bit with this is also powered by wordpress okay so i think what we're going to look at is we're going to look at the option of you know maybe putting some stuff behind i'm not saying that we're going to but we might put some stuff behind there because look five dollars everyone says when moon when moon when mass adoption you know how you can start with the mass adoption be an adopter yourself you know uh, go out there and reward some of the amazing content creators like just from our community right now we looked at riley q we looked at Patricia C. We looked at Serdan. Serdan. We looked at a lot of different sites about people in our community. They're all bloggers, and they all appreciate that when when you go with a um, with a with a Quill subscription and you stream micro payments. Now, here's what I love about this. I want to get into the pop. Here's the pop. So everyone's going big deal. What's the deal? The big deal is is that as a consumer, you end up on a site and it says, hey, you can pay me $798 for the year, or you can go ahead and click on this and get yourself a $5 subscription and stream payments, right? And your consumer, you don't know anything about XRP. You don't even know about Bitcoin. You know about it. You heard about it because your friend Dennis knew somebody that bought Bitcoin and, and, and lost his shirt, right? There's something like that. But they're like, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, well, yeah, we'll get. So here's the thing. With Fiat, you connect your bank and you pay, pay five bucks. You go back to the WordPress site. You click on the little, the little doodad there and now you're reading it. Now... You don't know as a consumer that you're streaming XRP in the background. Now, the content creator, let's say it's on the chain. Let's say we're receiving that. We can then go to Uphold. They've got 30 different cryptocurrencies, 30 different fiats. Now, maybe I want my payment in, you know, um, Canadian dollars. You know, maybe I want it in USD. Maybe I want it in Bitcoin. So do you see where we're going with this? It's absolutely transparent to the user it also goes back to stuff that jeff and i have said on the chain here is that 
we're in XRP. We understand XRP. We understand the difference between XRP and Ripple. But here's the thing. Most people aren't going to care. When they pull up their phone and they push a button, they just want to know, hey, was I able to send Aunt Mabel, who lives in Greece, a payment? Did she get it in four seconds? Aunt Mabel, did you get it? Yeah, I have it. Thank you. Thank you, dear. I appreciate that. They don't care. So this is another thing where it's streaming payments. Now, the cool thing about X, well, streaming drops in the background. This is what's cool. You know, um, like right now, there may be some coil. I don't know if you're if you're in there, shout out. If you are watching us right now, this XRP minute, and you are watching via coil-enabled Chrome plugin, let me know. I'd love to know. And I'll shout you out because, man, I want to thank you and thank everybody because it really does make a difference. Also, too, we had um, Annalise in here about two weeks ago. She had said that, you know what? I don't see the ads on YouTube videos. She said that I only, I don't watch ads. What I do is I, I, I pay for the YouTube. So we started seeing something show up is payment, little payments from people who are YouTube subscribers. YouTube actually distributes a tiny bit of that, which is actually pretty cool. So just because, just, just because somebody has one of the YouTube subscription doesn't mean you're not going to, as a content creator, it's not going to, you know, going to get a little bit of that. Want to jump back over here. Uh, Crusaders fans says, Jeff and Chip, you guys deserve more followers. Surprised me there aren't more subscribers in the live stream. Well, it always surprises me too. Where we were on a really good uptick on that other channel. We were blowing up and all of a sudden we got hit with the, uh, with the, uh, you know, the algorithm. It happens at times. But thank you, Crusaders fan. Yeah, I really appreciate that. Freaking Clutch says, adopt the tech for five bucks a month now. I swear the entire XRP community did this and preached it while the ecosystem's built. We would all achieve micropayment success at scale. Yes, well said. Well said. You know what? Be part of it. It's like for five bucks, man, go reward people that are putting a lot of work and creating a lot of great content out there. And I'm talking about us. Believe me, all the all all the all the people that you watch in the space that do an XRP video, they all are coil enabled. So if you're watching them on a coil enabled browser, you're streaming micropayments. This is cool, right? If you want to see how the, it works. Let's be the let's be the start of the change. Let's do it ourselves. First thing I did, I was one of the early beta people in 2019, uh, very early, and and because I wanted to say, hey man, I believe in the tech. I'm gonna throw my hat in. It's just fun when you go to someone's site or whatever, and you're streaming payments in the background. Um, freaking clutch. Coil ILP is 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 um, freaking bank for us as a community. I've been saying that since day one. Yeah, I agree with that. I can't say that any better. Plus one or every early coil subscriber. Okay, also say same here. Also on Brave, just tipped you in bad. Also double whammy. Beautiful. Thank you, freaking clutch. Yeah, on bad as well. So listen, you know we're big purveyors in the space, and it's like we believe in everything. And the basic attention token that was created by Brave, Brendan Ike. I'm a huge fan of Brendan Ike, uh, the creator of JavaScript. You know, at JavaScript's on every website you're gonna visit. Every website. And um, you know, he was original, um, you know, inventor at Mozilla over there at Firefox. And um, they kicked him out of his company. That's a long story. Let's not get into it. But um, Freaking Clutch also says Coil's boost program on Coil's platform and sentiment is bang for creators that are blazing the path, too. I saw some payout amounts, and it's no joke. Yeah, you probably what you probably saw was um, in addition to payouts is probably boost payments. They have a boost program over there, which allows you to, you know, create. It's an incentive, you know. It, it's I will say that it that it helps. But again, you know, you got to get the ecosystem going and Coil has been really great at rolling that out. Now, Cinnamon just rolled out their own boost program. And the person that made it in our community who I love is uh, Sam I am. And Sam, you know, Sam was one of their top creators on Cinnamon. And he's also in the boost program. And he, he that's a guy that deserves it. And one of the cool things, use cases that he does is that he'll put his video first on Cinnamon so you don't have to wait to watch it on, on here, right? He goes up and puts it up there, so it's kind of like an early, uh, an early um, watch, right? You get to like like a preview. You ever you ever know somebody? They go like, hey, I can't wait for that movie to come out. I go, I saw it last week, and you're like, what? And they're like, yeah, I saw the preview. Like sometimes in a city, they'll open up for one night. Sam does that same concept. I think it's brilliant, and I was really happy to see that he made Creator of the Month. Hats off to him. He puts out some great videos. If you guys have not seen his BTC Maxi video, man. I was on the floor roaring. That's one of the best videos I've seen in a long time. That is so much fun. What's up, GDLT? Much love to you. You've been oh, you've been lurking. That's cool. Yeah, a lot of people lurk. Yeah, I like lurkers. Lurkers are as good as anybody else, right? 
That's what I always say. So yeah, when I when we talk about this technology, when we talk about being adopters in the space, we gotta remember, hey, you know what? You don't look out there for it to happen. It starts right here. You start using it, you start telling people, look, to be honest with you, I think it's something like, like if you're watching an hour stream, um, oh, I just got a hard drive notice. No good, no bueno. But anyway, if you're watching something, um, it's interesting that you maybe would stream like less than one XRP, but it's it's not about one person. It's about the masses, isn't it? It's not about me. It's about a bunch of people. And if more people did it, then the community would certainly grow. If it's your first time here, thank you for stopping by. Consider subscribing and subbing below. Man, I know for most of you, it's not your first time. And let me give you a hug, a, a free hug. Yeah. Um, give you a hug, but thank you for being here too, because you guys make this so much, it's so enjoyable for me. Thank you so much for the comments and, you know, Connie, thank you for holding it down. Appreciate that freaking clutch. Great contribution today. Um, yeah, I want one last comment. If Brave used the ILP internally, we could tip and get paid in any format and currency. The only issue with Brave is BAT exclusively, which is fine, but give us other options. Well, I think that, I think we'll find something where that will come. And again, if you get bad, you can basically you can you can transfer for anything you want anyway. So it's not it's not all 100% lost there. It's it's certainly uh, it certainly is uh, open for examination. Guess what? We're early days, so it's not it's not like we're not going to be uh, we're not going to be figuring it out. And that's one of the things that I love about what Coil's doing. It's like partnering with Uphold. Man, you want it in one of the 30 currencies or 30 um, you know digital assets then it's up to you and how you want to decide that's all i got for tonight be back next week wednesday tomorrow night we got a very special interview coming up in this time slot you guys are not going to want to miss it it's the biggest interview we've done yet um you guys should see the notice pop pretty soon but it's alex mashinsky he is the ceo extraordinaire he is one of the big fishes out there and his background he's built so many amazing companies but anyway he came on the chain and he had an amazing conversation and the next day on friday morning we uh we did an after show with him lasted almost 40 minutes so he's from celsius if you didn't know um that's just one of the companies he's founded uh, a number of them he's also the father of voice over ip which again almost everybody uses on a daily basis at some some point and that after show then saturday morning you can catch Third, uh, Jeff does the uh, the hotter review usually around 8:30. Um, Sunday night we're gonna have two special guests, two people that we love in the community. They're gonna come. They're coming on the roundtable. Fingers crossed. But again, it'll be a very good conversation. Hope to see you on Sunday. And again, Monday night the live stream, Tuesday night live, and then Wednesday night we'll be back here with the XRP minute. That's all I got. If you have any questions or you wanna. You put a comment down below. Throw something down below. Did you agree with what I said? Did you not agree? Did I miss something? Let me know. I read the comments. I respond to them. And I want to let you know, thank you very much for, you, for being here. Much love, Chip. Ow! Are you down with OTC? Please like, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified when the next video drops.